Well, we all are all hopeful that the, that the building and uh, co completion of the Civil Rights Museum will help educate all of us, black and white, of what has preceded uh, us in the, in the past by way of the changes that have come about, the sacrifices that have been made, and the uh, progress that, that we who live in Mississippi now uh, have, uh, have made. Uh, and, and, and let that be a basis for, for being demonstrated in the Civil Rights Museum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I have to ask this. Can you, do you think the state can afford a museum or two museums right now? And, and, and if so, how, how will that be financed? Well, of course, it, of course we, can, we can support uh, these museums. They, I think they're among the more important institutions that we will have created. First place, they're going to represent a celebration of the 200th anniversary of the state of Mississippi. We celebrate our bicentennial in, in 2017. I want to see these museums uh, uh, demonstrate uh, that whole history of 200 years in a way that people living here now and those outside the state uh, can understand better what we have uh, to to. Uh, to celebrate and what we have to learn from. Uh, these are these are relatively this is a relatively uh, small amount of money to make that kind of investment, and uh, they've been on the drawing boards for years and years, as you know, and and now we finally have an opportunity uh, supported by a wide range of people, black folks and white people, Governor Barber. Uh, many of the African American members of the legislature have come together in a remarkable way, a remarkable show of unity, uh, to demonstrate how important they think this is. And uh, I, I've been happy in the state government a long time. I was in state government a long time. I was in the legislature 60 odd years ago. I've seen that old argument used so many times. I remember when we were trying to get a medical school out here. And that old argument, we just can't afford it. We're a poor state. We can't afford a, a medical school. And now everybody who goes by this medical school appreciates uh, uh, the investment that was made by an earlier generation. The same was true back in the 30s. Back in the 30s when we were poor as dirt, we had the largest bond issue in the history of Mississippi to begin building highways. You have to spend money in a way that will result in the kind of uh, permanent, uh, affirmative uh, effect that it has on the people. This also, I might add, is a huge economic, uh, huge economic boost for the state. Uh, this will be one of the great uh, museum corridors in, 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 all the, in all the United States. The Museum for Mississippi History, Civil Rights Museum, the old Capitol Museum, sitting there on the Fleur's Bluff where this but the city of Jackson uh, was originally uh, constructed. This will be a sensational, I think, a sensational tourist de uh, destination. And it will pay for itself. These museums will pay for themselves over the course of time by virtue of the creation here of a tourist destination in addition to all of the intangible benefits that come from people being educated about their past. Uh, Governor Barber mentioned yourself and, and Judge Anderson as, as, as in the discussions that you all had about the museum. When, when did you first start talking to Governor Barber about the museum? When were there discussions? When did that start? Well, Governor Barber initiated the discussion several years ago uh, at a time when uh, Reuben Anderson and I and many others, uh, John Palmer, uh, were appointed to a committee to begin plans for a civil rights museum. At that time, it was hoped that there would be enough private support that no state money would be involved. And we worked for two or three years to accomplish that. However, uh, that was not to be. It, it was finally decided, it was finally agreed on that the only way we were going to get a civil rights museum was for the people of Mississippi to invest in it. And that's how it came to, came to be that this year uh, Governor Barber, George Anderson, uh, myself, others uh, sat out and said, now, now's the time to do it. 
uh, we shouldn't put it off any longer. It ought to be started now so that it will be finished in time for the uh, observance of the bicentennial in, in uh, 2017. So it, so it really was a question of money. Some, some have said that, that Governor Barber sort of pushed for this because he's come under fire for remarks he's made about the civil rights era. Do, do you have any comment there or any? Well, I, I, can, I can tell you that Governor Barber was interested in the Civil Rights Museum long before uh, that controversy developed. As I say, he initiated the idea to build one, uh, began raising, personally raising money for it, and then uh, those plans did not materialize, the result, I suppose, of the recession, where philanthropic money was much harder to come by. And then there was a, some, some um, division about where it was going to be located. So uh, I think he concluded, as I did, that the only way it was going to be done was to go ahead and, and let the state legislature make that decision, locate it, and provide the funding for it, and now we're on the way to do that, and I'm, I'm elated that we are. Can, can you describe your relationship with, with uh, Reuben Anderson and, and just how you guys have, have worked together over the past few years to bring this about? Well, Judge Anderson and I go back a long way. I, I, knew, I knew him when he was a law student at Ole Miss, and I, he and I have been good friends for a long time. I have respected him and, and, and appreciated the contributions that he's made to the state of Mississippi. Judge Anderson is, uh, is one of the most, uh, I think, one of the most distinguished uh, Mississippians that we have, meant so much uh, to this state. And uh, he and I have uh, generally, I think, uh, thought alike in terms of how we ought to make uh, progress uh, in, in the state. And we felt that the Civil Rights Museum was something that would stamp Mississippi uh, as having uh, gotten through those bad old days now and want to commemorate the progress we've made and, and, and celebrate that progress at the same time show great, show respect and gratitude for the sacrifices that were made by an early generation of people in this day. 